we're going to talk about our port flow analyzer and before we offer flow bench testing and but before we get into the software I think it's best to talk a little bit about how basic flow bench works here we are on page 12 of our user's manual giving a little diagram of a couple types of flow benches um, but both flow benches depend on a simple principle we're comparing uh, a known hole, which we call an air measurement orifice, here, and the pressure drop you get across here when you have flow going through it, to an unknown restriction, being the port and the valve opening here in your head. And we compare the pressure drops across the known hole and the unknown hole, and if we know the pressure drop differences and the size of this measurement orifice, we can tell you how much or what the CFM rating is of the head at different lifts. We have two different types of benches. One where the blower is in between the measurement orifice and the head, and one where the blower is on the end. The difference between these is if you have this type, like a Superflow 110 bench, the air might come in here when you're flowing in the exhaust direction, go through the blower, and be heated up quite a bit. So the air temperature going out the exhaust port might be significantly hotter then it's going, coming in the measurement orifice. Or if you flow in the other direction, this could be room air coming in the intake, be heated up, and it could be a lot hotter going out here. Because the temperature between the measurement orifice and the head is different, on a 110 type bench or benches similar to that, you will have to do a temperature correction. You will have to measure the air temperature here and here and do a correction. Luckily, our port flow analyzer takes care of all that for you. But I just want to explain what the difference is between that and a Superflow, let's say a 600 or 1020, where the air comes in at room temperature, goes through the measurement orifice, basically still at room temperature, and then gets heated here uh, by the blower as it just gets expelled back out into the room. For this type of bench, you don't have to do a temperature correction. But the basic idea with both types of benches is you have a known restriction, and you measure the pressure drop across this restriction, you have the unknown restriction being the port, and you measure the pressure drop across it. Now, the pressure drop across the head, the uh, you know, uh, is typically on a 110 about 10 inches of water. You try and hold that constant. Over here on a 600 or a 1020, it's typically 28 inches of water. Now, those numbers have just been established over history. It's not like they're magic, I and mean, they tell you something special about the engine that it's going to run on. It's just the nice thing about doing things like that is so that you can compare your numbers to everybody else in the world who also does it at 10 inches. And luckily, the software lets you do corrections. If you can't hold it at exactly 10 inches or 28, it will correct for those small variations. And if you have a test that was flown at 10 inches of water pressure drop on a 110, the program will let you correct to what it should have been at 28 let's say if on a 600 bench, so you can compare numbers between benches fairly easily. Now, if you're wondering what does 10 inches of water mean, think of a, a long drinking straw going into your soda. And let's say you, on this long drinking straw, you suck on it and you pull the, the fluid up 10 inches above the height of the liquid in the, in the cup. If you hold it at 10 inches above that liquid, you are maintaining 10 inches of vacuum on that straw. Or if you blew on the straw and the air, the liquid level in the straw was 10 inches below the liquid level in the cup, if you have to be a fairly tall cup, um, you are maintaining 10 inches of pressure on that straw. Same thing through with this one. If you sucked it up 28 inches up in the straw, you can tell that would be a lot more vacuum you'd have to put on it. And, and that's basically what we're talking about is how can you maintain a uh, certain liquid level of water above a different height of water. And that's where the term 10 and 28 inches of water comes from. It's a simple way of measuring pressure or vacuum at fairly low levels. PSI is a much higher level, and we're talking about 28 inches of water is one PSI. And that might be why it came about being used, because it's a nice round one PSI. So that is basically how flow bench works. You take a known uh, re restriction and the pressure drop across it and compare it to an unknown restriction and the pressure drop across it.
Now when you first get your portfolio analyzer, you're going to have basically no data in it, and you might get a screen like this. What you can do is you can click on File, Open from All Save Tests, and we have provided some examples, tests for you to get going. And I'm just going to pull out one of these here, Superflow 600. And you can see here we have our test data, and we have a graph resulting from that. Now, there's two different ways you can run a test. You can run a test manually where you will type in numbers. You can see here we were running this test at 25 inches of test pressure. And flow pressure is what we got on our incline manometer. An incline manometer is just a more precise way of measuring pressure. And you can click on that space. And what we recorded during the test was 93, but let's say it wasn't 93. Let's say it was 65, something different. I'm going to type that in. And you can see over here, see how that used to be up here, matching all the other ports. But now it is down here. I made that change. If I put it back to where it was, 93, and you watch over here, it goes back to where it should be because that was the correct data. So you can type in a lift. L over D may not mean a lot to you right now. I'll explain it right now. That is the lift over diameter ratio, the valve lift over diameter ratio. And it is a useful term when you get into flow bench testing because if you notice the curves over here, they have a bend. They go up fairly rapidly and then they start bending over quite a bit. And you will notice that that bend here and here comes at a lift over diameter ratio of 0.25. When the valves lift, uh, gets to be one quarter of the valve's diameter, the restriction now is no longer the curtain area of the valve, it is the throat area of the valve. Here's an illustration on page 69 of our book. Curtain area is the area around this opening when the valve is being, the poppet valve is being opened. And you can see we could uh, illustrate this with a strip of paper. Curtain area is like a shower curtain is where that term comes from. And this lift and that circumference equals a certain amount of area. The throat area is this area inside here. And you can see when the valve is lifted very little, the curtain area shrinks, but the throat area in here stays the same. So at low lifts, the circumferential area is the restricting area. When you keep lifting this, eventually you're going to get to a point where the throat area here, the circle, we could have a stem in there also, stem diameter, is going to now be bigger than the throat. And when it's bigger than the throat, now this becomes the restricting area, and the curtain area is no longer the restricting area. And that's why, and that happens at about one quarter of the valve's diameter. A lift equals one quarter of the valve's diameter is where that change occurs. We go from the curtain area being the restricting area to the throat area of this poppet valve opening being the restricting area. And that's why L over D sort of a long-winded answer, but that's why L over D is uh, calculated and displayed uh, for people who are more familiar with flow bench testing. Back in our port flow analyzer, here's the range. The range has to do with what range you're setting on your flow bench. This is a 600, and it's got, I believe, six ranges. We're on range four when we've measured this. This is the test pressure that you were holding, 25. This is the flow pressure you run on your incline manometer. These numbers result in a flow of 233 CFM for 25 inches of water. If we were flowing this at a different test pressure, you would see this at higher test pressure. This number will go up at, let's say, 10 inches. You'd see this number go down, maybe at about 160, 170 or something. So that is how it works, and you can type your numbers in manually. You can see up here across the top, we were flowing this. This is... Now exhaust number one, little tip message. And now we're on the exhaust for number one cylinder. And you can see here we do everything in red here to try and illustrate it's hot, it's exhaust. Intake number three. This is a, a Chevy head, so that's why the numbers go one, three, five, seven. Exhaust number three. The other way to do a test is with electronics. And if we go and click on our flow bench specs here, you can see 
Here's the type of flow bench we're using. Here's the ranges for your 600. This is the precise information. But down here in electronics, we say, for this test, we have no electronics. You could have a superflow flow com. Our electronic interface is not used too much anymore. Or you could have our newer black box. When you go and switch to electronics, you really improve your test accuracy and your test speed a lot. And uh, we do recommend if you've got some electronics, take advantage of it. Or the Performance Trends black box is affordable enough for, you know, about another 550 bucks or so. You can really improve things a lot for your flow bench testing. Another thing I wanted to point out is for types of flow benches. You can see we've got a lot of superflow types already built in for you. And we have some other types of benches here. Custom bench with orifices, which is basically a homemade knockoff. There's a lot of people who make a homemade knockoff of a superflow bench. JKM was another bench out there. They use pedo tubes to measure the airflow instead of orifices. Uh, I personally prefer these other methods better than the JKM bench. Performance Flow is an Australian manufacturer of flow benches. And uh, Performance Trends own Easy Flow system, which is, again, sort of a, the same concept as uh, the Superflow benches up here.